Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 29. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to add a second room to our game so things are a bit more interesting as we walk around. Let's jump into the code. Okay, so let's start off in the tilemap class um, inside of tilemap.lua which is... Um, haven't looked at this code for a while so I'll uh, just quickly uh, outline where we are. I'll just tidy up a bit as well. So um, inside of source logic rooms tile map, uh, we have the tile map class and the job of this class is to hold all of the data uh, for what our game map looks like and also to draw our game map to the screen. Uh, so if I run run our game you can see we've got the room here. Um, you can kind of look, see the shape of a floor, um, sort of this, uh, don't know what shape this is, sort of this right angle shape in the floor here. You can see that our um, map data here, this is basically just a great big string, great big list of uh, characters. Um, that looks like our level and that's because this string holds all of the information needed to draw our level. In this episode, uh, we're going to add in a second room, so we need a way of changing what this string looks like for every room which we draw. Uh, so we'll start by extracting this variable somewhere else, and we'll make it a parameter of our tile map, so we can uh, we can change it up depending on the room we want to draw. So actually, just to keep. Um, Just to keep things simple, we use the word map a lot in our game already, so I'm going to change the name of this to floor plan. So we'll create an argument uh, in tilemap.create called floor plan, and then we can look at extracting this. So inside of rooms, let's create a new folder. Let's call it floorplans.lua. Oops, not .lua, it's a folder. I'll just uh, rename that to floor plans. There we go. Then inside of floor plans, let's create a new file. And we'll call this one um, dungeon room .lua. And because this isn't going to be a class in the uh, sort of traditional sense for our code base, we're not going to do the normal dungeon room equals empty uh, empty table at the top. Instead, we're just going to create a local variable and we'll call it uh, let's call it dungeon room map. And let's just take our existing map. Oh, I said we weren't going to call it a map, didn't I? I said we were going to call it a floor plan. So let's say dungeon room floor plan, and then Let's take our existing floor plan and drop it in here. And then we can actually get rid of local map. And instead, wherever we use map, we'll just use floor plan instead. And this is just coming in as an argument to create now. Um, just up here we have floor plan then down here we uh, do all of the processing on our floor plan to get it into the form where we can use it as our game map so we did that um, who a fair few episodes back now um, but basically I'll just run over it again quickly what we do is we strip all of the white space off of our floor plan and then we are able to index the floor plan like a 2D array. And we just go through it character by character, drawing the correct tile uh, for the character. So inside of this draw function here, we say if there is an X in our floor plan, then we want to um, draw, where are we? Then we want to draw the tile using our tile sheet, which is at position 2-1. Uh, so we just use all of these characters to draw tiles in different positions at different x, y positions on the screen. There's just basically a lot of looping going on, nothing too, uh, nothing too heavy. And we'll leave this variable as map for now so we don't break everything. 
but I just thought uh, outside of this class at least we should start using the terminology floor plan instead of map so we don't use map everywhere. Anyway, so here is our new dungeon room floor plan. And so in this file, we're now going to um, require tile map just by at the top saying local tile map equals require source logic rooms tile map. And then at the very end of this uh, file, we're going to return tile map dot create and we'll pass in our dungeon room floor plan. And what this means is when we require this dungeon room dot lua, what we will get back is a tile map using the dungeon room floor plan. So we should end up um, with pretty much what we've got already, but we've successfully moved the maps somewhere else. And that's the first step towards using uh, different maps or a number of different maps. So now let's take a look at our map.lua. So this is the game map rather than the tile map and this controls the layout of all of the rooms in our game. And inside of this file there is a create room or inside of this class rather there is a create room function. And what this does is it creates a room um, for us, or it creates a room every time the player walks off of the screen going to the right. It creates a new room. Um, and previously we've only had one room, so we just do a room.create and pass in some entities. So let's check out room.lua as well. And if we look at room.create, which gets called every time we create a new room, we can see that the tile map is currently hard coded to tilemap.create, uh, which won't work anymore because we just uh, we just changed tilemap.create to take an argument. So we can fix that by passing in the actual tile map we want to use up here. And then we can just say instance tile map equals tile map because it's an argument, and I also think we can get rid of the require tile map as statement as well because we're not creating it inside of here anymore. Okay, so now in map.lua where we call room.create, we need to pass in the tile map we just extracted into dungeon room. So we can say local we'll just say dungeon room equals require source logic rooms floor plan floor plans dungeon room dungeon underscore room and then inside of room.create we should be able to pass in dungeon room as our first argument and hopefully um, everything will work as it did before. Uh, we'll find out. Yes. So it's all good so far. Let's just check we can still change rooms. We can and check we can go backwards. We can, excellent. So that was part one. So now it should be pretty easy to create an entirely new floor plan. Uh, and in this episode, we're not going to worry about using different tile sets or doing um, doing something completely different. We're just going to reuse the existing tiles. So we'll go in, create a new file, and let's call this one um, bridge. I guess we called it floor plan. Did we call the other one floor plan? No, we didn't. Okay, so let's just uh, call this one bridge.lua. And let's make our bridge floor plan, I think, or what did we call this? Yes. I'll, uh, I'll get my head around the new naming eventually, but uh, <laughs> bridge floor plan equals, and just a reminder, these double square brackets just mean everything in between them Lua will treat as a string. Um, and just to speed things up uh, and to get the proportions right, I'll just take our existing map and copy it into our new map over here. Okay, so we can keep most of this, I think. 
uh, but from about here down, so this is one, two, three, four, whoops, start again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's take out ten lines and we'll put in that's one line. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because we don't have a character registered for um, inside of our tile map um, for the uh, hash or pan symbol or whatever you want to call it, the game just won't draw it. So this is a good way of adding um, just adding in empty space. And again, we're going to say local tile map equals um, require. Oops. Um, where was it? Source logic rooms tile map. And then at the end of this file, we want to return tile map dot create. And uh, we want to create a tile map with our bridge floor plan. And let's just put the. Uh, the, this comma symbol is um, just a little stone on the ground to add a bit of uh, and make it look a bit more interesting and break up the floor a bit. So I'm just going to move uh, where the stones are. There we go. Okay, let's uh, just go straight to our map class and we'll also pull in our bridge. So we'll just say bridge room equals require source logic rooms floor plans bridge. And now inside of create room, if we, oop, gone too far. Instead of dungeon room, if we use bridge room, Aha, we notice that we now have a bridge. Uh, now remember I put in the pound or hash signs, which means the space at the top doesn't get filled. Um, our entities are currently appearing in the wrong place and our player is uh, off of the floor so they can't walk around. Uh, but we can fix that up in just a second. Um, we'll probably do the correct entity positioning in the next video because at the moment the map decides where the entities should go, but it would make much more sense if the rooms themselves decided where the entities belonged. But oh well. Um, so for now, let's just finish off our bridge room. So I did a few pieces of art off camera, and one thing I added was in our dungeon tile set. Let's uh, zoom right in on our dungeon tiles. We now have this tile here, which is going to be the top of the bridge. So let's just add that tile in. And we'll use this character for it. So make sure we save that. Then inside of our tile map, we can just say if character equals that one, then tile sheet draw tile view x y, and this is in two free. Actually, it's the second tile in the uh, is it the third or fourth row? Anyway, it is a uh, two free, I think. So let's uh, and then the final thing we need to do actually before we run our game again is. Inside of room.lua we currently have this walkable function, which again is something we may need to move somewhere else eventually. But um, And we certainly need to update this logic here, but for now I'll just extend it to um, also check to see if we're standing on this tile, because this tile should also be walkable. Um, all this class does at the moment is check to see if the tile we're standing on uh, matches any of the tiles for walkable floor, and if it does, it lets the player walk on them. Okay, and I think I need to add in one more row of floor as well. 
um, just so that our player can walk on it for now. So I'll take out that row and I'll put in this row. There we go. Now our bridge uh, looks a bit boring because we have all of this empty space at the top. So the other piece of art I did off camera is uh, this background here, which isn't quite finished yet, but I think it's uh, in a state where we can where we can start to use it. And I might do an episode on drawing simple backgrounds and stuff, uh, you know, in the future. But for now, it's it's pretty simple. Most people can just knock this up um, by just playing around with some different colors. And we're going to use our background in our bridge level. So inside of our tile map class. Let's create a second argument. So we now take a floor plan and a background. And we'll just say inst.background equals background. Now when we draw our um, tile sheet, or yeah, or our level or whatever we want to call it, we want to draw our background if we have a background. So not all of our rooms will have a background at the moment, our dungeon room doesn't, so we'll just do a quick if self.background then we want to draw the background. And the way we're going to do this is we'll use our view, so for all of our drawing and actually just remind ourselves by looking at our tilesheet class. If we look at draw tile we use uh, the view and we say view in context and then we pass in this drawing function, which is basically just using Love's um, drawing API. When the only reason we pass it into this in context uh, function here is so that we apply all of the same transformations uh, whenever we draw something. But we want to apply slightly different transformations here, so we're going to make a new function. And that is function is going to be called in background context. And it will work in exactly the same way. It will take a function as an argument. And that function will hopefully have some drawing inside of it. So what we will say here is we want to just say love graphics draw. And we'll draw the background at 0, 0. Nice and simple. So let's make sure that function actually exists. So inside of our view class, we can see here we have in context. We just take our draw function and we go ahead and call our draw function after we apply all of these transformations. It's going to do something very similar. Local in background context equals function self draw function. And this function is going to be almost the same, but it's not going to have any transformation or any uh, linear translation. So we still want to um, call love.graphics.push. And we still want to scale all of our artwork. Scale, 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 oops, there we go. But we don't want to do any translation, so we're just going to go ahead and call our draw function, and then we undo all of our previous transformations with love.graphics.pop. And let's uh, make sure we attach that function to our object. In background context equals in background context. And let's make sure we actually have a background to draw. So inside of bridge.lua, as well as our local bridge floor plan, we want to go ahead and create a, let's just call it background, nice and simple. And here we can just use love.graphics new image. And we'll pass in the path to our image, which is assets backgrounds test underscore background dot png and we also need to remember to j 
just set the filter mode on our background to nearest and nearest to stop it going fuzzy when we scale it. Okay, and then if we oops, pass in background here as an argument, hopefully we'll have our background. Now, one last thing we need to do inside of view, we currently have our view offset by 10 pixels, and I'm just going to switch this to zero. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is just because it makes everything line up and look a lot nicer. Now, because we don't transform our background, um, as we walk, we can see that our background stays still, but our level, um, our level uh, scrolls, basically, or our level gets translated, but our background doesn't, which gives us a really nice effect. Um, it sort of helps to make the things in the background look like they are really far in the distance and um, keeps everything in the foreground nice and crisp and uh, you know makes sure that the person playing the game pays attention to the stuff in the foreground. So there we go. And the final thing I'm going to do for this episode, just to wrap it up, is inside of um, map.lua, inside of create room, Let's actually uh, make things a bit more interesting. So let's say um, if love.math.random, which will just give us a random number between 0 and 1, is greater than 0 0.5, then we'll return a bridge room. Else we'll return room.create a dungeon room and now if we run the game we start out on the bridge and then we're in the dungeon and if I can make it to the third room without getting killed we'll be on the bridge again great and uh, there we get a little bit of pop as the um, as the camera follows the player up and down, but that's something I'll probably fix next time. I think I'm going to do another episode on rooms and just making sure everything is uh, is neat and tidy in this area. So I'll wrap it up here for now, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series, and if you've got a few seconds, uh, please do consider hitting like or subscribe. It really does help me out a great deal. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.